If you're getting ready to build a new home and you have a production builder or a custom builder wanting to do a home theater package for you, you're going to want to watch this video to avoid some of the mistakes that they may be making in your new home. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics. I want to talk to you guys if you're getting ready to build a new home. I know it's a super exciting time to move into a new house and you're looking at doing a media room so you can enjoy movies, listen to music. And many of these builders will not let you do your own pre-wiring. They won't let you hire a third party to come in and, and do this kind of stuff for you. They want you, they want to sell you their own pre-wire package. And sometimes that ties your hands and many times they just, do a really compromised installation for you. And then it leaves you in a situation where you're not gonna get a good experience for it. So I wanted to go over some of the things that I've noticed when I built homes and I've been into clients' homes and I saw what the builders have done. And I've conversed with Don Dunn from Haven Smart. He's got lots of stories. In fact, if we get a lot of views on this video, I might have to do a live stream with Don and we can share war stories about these installations and get some insights from him from all the experience he has. But one of the biggest things I've noticed is when they do a, a packaged pre-wire system is they use the very lowest grade cables. They stick all the cables for the speakers in the ceiling, if they even do that at all. And then they do a pre-wire trim for your HDTV, which is usually power, coax, and maybe, maybe HDMI. So here's an example of a beautifully well done furniture piece here with the cabinets and the back wall. Look at how small this TV is. I don't know what they were thinking here. It is like a computer monitor size TV. No pre-wire for sound, no sound bar, no speakers or anything. So this is just not a good media experience. Here's another example. Again, beautiful, crafted. I mean, they, the pattern on that wall is gorgeous. The cabinetry, the fireplace. I'm digging this whole vibe of this room. I love the windows. I love the decorations, the lights. TV's a little bit small, but it's probably usable. But again, there's no emphasis on anything about sound. There's no pre-wires for speakers. Maybe you could put a sound bar in after the fact, but how good are you going to get of sound with just one sound bar without surround speakers, without a subwoofer? I don't know. I mean, there, there, there's things that could have been done here that would have made this installation a lot better. Here's the one that's the most unforgivable for me. And I see this all the time. This is in my sister-in-law's house when she built her new home. They offered her a 5.1 pre-package wiring. They didn't even actually pre-wire for a subwoofer. So she had to just plug it into the receiver after the fact. But look at the big mistake here. They've got their critical LCRs, the front LCRs, all in the ceiling. That's the one thing you always want to avoid if you can. Never put your front three speakers in the ceiling. You want your front three speakers to be line of sight. So you want them all at the same level position wise when you're sitting in your theater chairs or your couch. Here's an example of what you really want. Ideally, you want three identical speakers vertically oriented like this with the tweeters all in a similar position. This gives you, and this is from RBH Sound, it's their active SVTRS system. Obviously this is an upscale install. It's meant for a theater room. There's acoustic treatments in there as well. And then this goes behind an acoustically transparent screen. So all you see at the end of the day is just the screen. You don't see the speakers. That's a much better solution. And you don't have to go to that level to get that kind of performance. But one thing you don't want is your speakers for your front three sound stage in the ceiling. You could put your surround speakers in the ceiling, especially your Atmos speakers. That's more forgivable because that's more ambience. It's more effects. But if you want to hear the center channel dialogue really well, this is the complaint I get from my sister-in-law all the time. She's like, I got to keep turning the volume up because I can't hear the voices. Well, how are you going to hear the voices when your center channel is in the ceiling all the way towards the front of the room, firing down when you're sitting on a couch 12 or 15 feet away? Doesn't work good. Not a good recommendation. So I have four alternatives for how you could fix this and avoid this kind of mistake from your production builder. You want them, if you can, to pre-wire your front three LCRs in the front wall at ear level. And there's four different ways you can do this. You can use these wires. One would be after the fact, you can retrofit, you cut the drywall out, you put some in-wall speakers in. 
this is well positioned with the TV. You could put really high quality in walls in. You could even retrofit back boxes with some of the brands that offer those. This is a great alternative. And then they're flush mount to the wall and you can even paint the grill so it blends in with the rest of the decor. Here's another example. This is from Sonance. This looks really cool. You notice that the, the LCRs are, are distributed evenly around the, uh, the display. And then there's an in-wall subwoofer. Now, you can even put a subwoofer in the ceiling. In the Audioholic Smart House uh, bedroom system, I've got two JL Audio 8-inch subs in the ceiling, and those things hammer. And all they do is look like little air condition vents. Very slick, very discreet. The other alternative, if you can't do an in-wall, in some houses, like in my house and the Florida houses, they're all block construction. You might not have an uh, interior wall where you put in the TV in a bedroom. And in that case, like in my uh, situation, I have furring strip over a block. And that only gives you about an inch, maybe an inch and a half uh, between the drywall and the block. You always typically need at least three and a half to four inches to put in-wall speakers into a wall, obviously because of the basket of the drivers and the magnets and stuff. So if you can't put an in-wall because you have block construction on that wall, you could do an on-wall. Like in this case, these are Focal speakers and they come in various different colors and the grills as well. I mean, it's very decorative. It's very functional. Um, it's similar to putting a speaker in the wall, except now the speaker kind of hangs on the wall. So if you get something that looks slick like this, this is a very good alternative to just doing, uh, definitely great alternative to doing in ceiling speakers, but it's an alternative to doing in walls if you don't have block construction. The other option, and, and I'm lucky that I have a wife that's so into sound like I am, she wanted box speakers. So in my case, we had on our family room, we had the ability to put in walls. She's like, no, I want people to come into the family room and I want it to be a focal point where they see the big TV and they see nice speakers there. And this is something we could always interchange and, and upgrade or do whatever we want. So in this picture, this is an older picture. This is when we first moved in. That's an 85 inch Sony TV. It's backlit, so it looks really neat. That's a decorative wall, which also func functions for acoustics. It does some diffusion. And in this case, we've got the Paradigm Premier 800Fs and the 500C center channel. Beautiful sound and products. Excellent timber matching between the three speakers. They're all at ear level. That center channel is really close to the TV, so it sounds like the dialogue is coming directly from the TV. And it looks cool. I mean, it, you can get whatever you want, whatever finishes you want in speakers. You can make that a cool focal point in the room if that's what you want to do. So the fourth option, if you can't do in walls and you can't do on walls and you don't want box speakers, I would recommend a passive LCR soundbar. And I know soundbars get a dirty rap in the industry. Audiophiles don't think you could get good sound. That might have been true 10 or 15 years ago, but it's not so much the case now. There's a lot of good uh, brands of soundbars, passive soundbars on the market now. Now, what I mean by passive soundbar in this case, this is the Klipsch Heritage soundbar. This doesn't have amplification built in. It doesn't have any DSP processing. Consider it an LCR speaker. It's your left, center, and right speakers all in one box, custom fit to, to the size of your TV. This is a great alternative if you can't do the in walls or the on walls. It puts everything in line with the TV. As you can see here, this is the master bedroom of the Audioholic Smart House. 65 inch TV, the heritage soundbar is cut to the size of the TV. Now when I have panning from left center to right, it's all in that line under the TV. And it's just, it sounds great. I mean, it's obviously it's not as good in some cases as a really high end in-wall solution because the in-wall speakers, you can spread them a little bit further apart for music to give you better sound staging. But this is really damn good. It's better than I expected. I like the look of it. It's a really user-friendly uh, look if you want to have a clean look in your house. And putting a passive soundbar like the Klipsch Heritage Soundbar or other alternatives uh, from Leon or all the different brands that offer passive soundbars will give you way better sound than putting speakers in the ceiling for your front three LCRs. So please consider that. We gave you three or four alternatives to doing speakers in the ceiling for your front three LCRs. The next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is the pre-wire packages. These builders often use the very lowest grade cables in their pre-wires. They typically use 18 gauge cable and it's 
and I've seen copper clad aluminum, which is not a very good conductor compared to pure copper. Um, I put together this little kind of comparison here so you could see 12 gauge is the big cable and then all the way up to 18 gauge is what the builders typically use. 18 gauge cable has two and a half to three times the resistance of 14 gauge. So what that means is if you're running 18 gauge in the house, you're adding more resistance at longer uh, runs to your speakers and you're going to have more losses. If you would have them change to 14 gauge, you could run that cable almost three times as far and still have the same resistance as if it was just 18 gauge. That's the, that's how much of a difference it is. And you can see, I put the little resistance table here. Now I like 14, four personally, 14, four is a really good kind of cable. Make sure it's CL2 approved. Like you can see here with this model price, it has that white jacket. So it's fire uh, retardant. Um, I like 14, four, because 14.4 is, is good for two reasons. It gives you redundancy. So if they break a, break a wire or a lead when they put the drywall up and they put the nails in, you've got three other conductors. Or you can parallel two conductors on each side and it turn that 14 gauge into 11 gauge so it lowers the resistance by three gauge. Or let's say you pre-wired in the ceiling for two speakers with 14.4. Well, now you can add two more speakers by splicing those two conductors that you're not using and then have someone snake the cable to the location you want in the ceiling. So you could go from a 5.1.2 system to a 5.1.4 system. So I really recommend you guys consider doing 14.4 speaker cables throughout the house. Talk to your builder if you can. Talk them into it, even if you have to pay an upgrade fee. You're only doing it once and you don't want to retrofit after the fact. Sometimes it's very difficult to put cables in after the drywall's up. Um, also talk to your builder about the installation of where the speaker locations are going. Again, you want your front three LCRs line of sight, seated ear level position. You have these four, four alternatives to doing in-ceiling speakers. And that's about it for now. I want to get your uh, opinions down below. Did you use a builder to put together a home theater pre-wire package for you? Was it a nightmare? Because I've seen a lot of horror stories. I've, I've been to houses where they were done really poorly. And the cool thing is, if they did put all your speakers in the ceiling, don't sweat it out. You could repurpose those in-ceiling speakers for Atmos. And you could go and add LCRs to the front after the fact. If you could get someone to pre-wire for you, or you could put box speakers in the room, you could retrofit and reuse those speakers that are already in the ceiling. So don't just think, if you've already built the house and those speakers are in the ceiling, that they're garbage, that you can't throw them away. You could potentially repurpose them as high channels or even maybe move them in the ceiling since the pre-wires are there and patch that drywall and then move them and use them as tops for Atmos. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button, share this video. Give me some comments down below of your horror stories of installations that people have done, uh, production builders have done, or just stuff that you've seen. I want to hear your stories down below. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.